Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment, research methodology and several other topics on my channel The Geo Ecologist. In this session, we are going to learn something from economic geography of utmost importance and that is limits to growth. So what is this limit that we are talking when we say limits to growth? What is this book called Limits to Growth by Meadows and Meadows? How did it emerge? And several concepts which is engraved related to the predicament or we say dilemmas related to future of humankind. So that's important to understand when we say limits to growth. So let's understand that in today's session. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about this concept of limits to growth. But before we go into the concept, just take a look into this book which was published in 1972 for the first time and it went to fifth printing in the same year. It means it was a hugely heavily well distributed and well published book in the same year in 1972. Right? So what you observe here, the limits to growth where author's name are written, Donella H. Meadows, Dennis L. Meadows, then you have Randers and also Behrens. Now observe there are four major authors and there is also a team of people working under these four authors. Together this team put in this huge work which talked about the various kinds of dilemma related to the future of mankind. We say future of humanity. So what is this limits to the growth that was happening in the society post World War II was actually discussed. So if you observe what happened in April 1968, Right? A group of about 30 individuals from 10 different countries, scientists, educators, economists, humanists, industrialists, national and international civil servants gathered together. And where did they gather? At Academia di Lince in Rome. Now, when they gathered in Rome, they met this person called Dr. Aurelio Pecchi. And he was an industrial manager, economist and man of a vision who led into this idea of the future predicament dilemmas of human and also talking about various aspects of how the humanity is going to survive or is it going to end. So this was the time when Club of Rome was established. So out of this meeting grew this Club of Rome which was basically what? It's an informal organization that has been aptly described as invisible college. Now understand, people from various walks of life, from different expertise coming together and discussing something very important for the entire humanity. So they were invisible in terms of the college, in terms of institution. But it was an institution somewhat, right? So it is also said that it is an invisible college. So its purpose was to foster the understanding, to facilitate better understanding of the various aspects and components related to economic, political, natural and social components of the day-to-day -day environment, day-to-day -day life and also look into the global system in which we all live. This was the prime purpose to create a better understanding and also to bring new understanding. Typically, the attention of policymakers and public worldwide in new policy initiatives and action towards sustainability, towards sustainable development. Although the concept of sustainable development was coined itself in 1987, but the ideas were already existing that we need to sustain for a long time period. So we need to rethink the way we are developing. This idea is what led to the creation of this book called Limits to Growth from the ideas discussed amongst these great scholars in the Club of Rome. That's what is the inception for this concept of Limits to Growth. Now, observe few more points here in Limits to Growth that it is visible that natural resource depletion is common and after basically industrialization, population explosion and urbanization. And what happened in 1960s, remember? After World War II, the entire world was restructuring, replanning, redeveloping, development of great urban centers, suburbia development and so many other factors were dominating the world economy, right? And what was happening alongside? Deforestation, rapid urbanization and pollution, environmental degradation, resource depletion and several other problems related to population explosion. So what happened? Jay Forrester, 
He was a pioneer American computer engineer in 1960s and a great system scientist as we know. So what did he do? What is his contribution behind limits to growth? Let's understand. He is credited for system dynamic concept evolution and world one report and world two report. So basically, using the latest computer-based technology and simulations, he formulated two reports, World 1 report and World 2 report, which talked about that how humanity is progressing and what is going to be the future in situation with what is going on around us. So in counter thinking, Forrester was the first who published the World Dynamics book in 1970. Via this book, many questions were put forth around the world academia. So what happened? He published this work called Industrial Dynamics in 1961, Urban Dynamics in 1969 and World Dynamics in 1970. So three works which came before Limits to Growth, which actually made people think in Club of Rome. So basically, who was the father of this Limits to Growth? If you observe, he was J. Forrester, right? Due to his work, due to his three different volumes of work in 1960s, this idea resonated with several world scientists and they at the Club of Rome meeting in Italy, they discussed furthermore and finally this volume of Limits to Growth was published in 1972. So the Club of Rome, if you look here, Club of Rome was formed in 1968 as we know and they were there to discuss the Forrester's idea, his research papers, and it continued to research on the Forrester's work till 1972 and finally formulated this into the Limits to Growth book, right? And the basic idea was to talk about mankind's sustainability, right? Also, this book led into rethinking of Malthusian population theory and gave a report on world resources. That's where the idea of this particular sustainability that is people and resources hand in hand came together in limits to growth right so if you look here dennis l meadows was the director and there were several other scholars who formed the part of club of rome and they helped in the formulation of these ideas and this final volume of limits to growth was published in 1972 right now what is this limits to growth let's come to the formal definition so limits to growth is basically what this is a theory that says that there is a limit beyond which the nature will not let us sustain humanity will disappear from the earth right so development is not possible after a given limit right so with this limit word you must also remember there is something called law of diminishing returns after a particular optimum position there is always a downtrend right so this is what is the basis behind this limits to growth that there is a limit to everything that we are saying here right so the limit to growth model was developed by donella and dennis those were husband and wife meadows and meadows report we also say right in common terminology meadows and meadows report so what were the five basic assumptions of this model that how the humanity is going to collapse or how there is going to be a downfall at the end of the century so the basic assumption in this model where we have limited resources available on earth so it is basically the fixity and finite resources available then limited agricultural land for people then earth has a limited capacity to consume the pollution that we are creating all around us right it will not consume after a limit then the model also give importance to technology and innovation to change productivity and the model does not give much importance to the recycling and pollution control mechanism because in 1968 and about 72, this mechanism was not that developed. So these were the basic premise or assumptions on which this entire model functions and this book was written with this particular idea. Now, coming to this basic components, the limits to growth has these th three components. One, we already learned that the basic assumption. Then comes the input variables. And then there are five runs, which we say is simulation modeling, or we can simply say the models. That is in terms of different scenarios, assuming a scenario and saying, if this happens, what is the resultant? If this happens, the next resultant. So similarly, five different simulations or five different cases were identified and later two more were added. So in total about seven cases, right? So here we are looking at the prime basic cases that is five runs that they talked about. But before that, let's look into the five variables on which this data was put in the model, right? It was a computerized model. So data was taken for population, for pollution, for per capita food availability, for per capita industrial production and natural resources, or we say non-renewable natural resources, basically. So these were the five inputs for which the data was 
fed in the model, which is limits to growth model, and then five different assumptions. So five different simulation models were created. So output will differ with changes in these five variables. This is basic idea that if it is a system approach, if you change the input, the output will change accordingly. So five different types of inputs and then five situations were created, right? So now let's look into these simulations or we say five sequences or we say five runs. Right. So what was the first run? The world was taken with current standard variables means the variables were taken according to the that time variables that existed in 1972 on the current standards. So what were the outputs received? The resultant was that increase in industrialization is inevitable. Loss of economic system will happen if we continue doing the same that we're doing right now. An increase in capital expenditure will happen and resource scarcity will lead to the collapse of the world system eventually. This was the first kind of simulation that if we do what we are doing in 1970s right now, the world will eventually collapse because of these things. So this is the result of first simulation. Then comes the second simulation that if we double the natural resources, this was added as an input that if we double the natural resources, then what happens? Let's see the result in that case. So due to decrease in resources in the first run, in this run, the resources were tried to be doubled using innovation and technology. But what were the outcomes? Let's look into it. So pollution increased because of high industrial production. Then death rate increased because of high population growth and decrease in food availability eventually. And double resources were only sufficient for few years. Again, there was a result of collapse of the world system eventually. So in second model also, even if we double the natural resources, people still lead to the collapse of the world system that was in the second assumption or second run or second consequence we say or second situation modeling that we say is second scenario modeling. Then the third scenario is the third run assumed unlimited natural resource and pollution control mechanism or measurements were taken in this situation. Now, if you assume that there are infinite resources and also pollution control mechanism, what would be the resultant? This was again put into the system. So what was the resultant? The world system still collapses. How? Due to food scarcity because agricultural production has limited capacity to produce. That's the limit here, right? So pollution problems will still persist and still there is a collapse. Right. So run number four was again done and assume that unlimited natural resources, pollution control and also high food productivity because here was food scarcity. So in fourth run, food productivity was considered high. Let, let's assume that if we create a situation where these three things are there, then what is the future of humanity? So the world system still was found to be collapsing due to high pollution level, due to very large number of industries. And collective pollution was very high as a resultant environment was completely degraded in this simulation again, right? Then came the fifth one, the major one that no assumption of unlimited resources and assumed rational growth. It means now if we assume that rational growth happens and if this assumption of unlimited resources is also left out, then what is the situation? So the run earth was considered as an isolated region in this fifth run, right? That if we consider that an isolated region is there due to the isolation generation capacity of resources, food and these were basically decreased. Again, what would happen is there is a collapse of world system again, right? Because this run was considered as an isolated region and people cannot exist in isolation. They'll always have to have an exchange, right? And still the eventually the world system collapses even if we consider this as a rational growth everywhere. So these five runs were something which were taken into consideration and further discussions happened and this created awareness across the academia in 1970s and we observe in 1972 Stockholm conference happening, several different laws being formulated across the world. In India also we had Operation Tiger and several animal reserves and national parks and bird sanctuaries and further increase in environmental awareness across the world and India. So this is the thing that triggered the limits to growth was a great trigger an awareness point that led to thinking about environment across the world, which we study as environmentalism in the modern history. Right. So this environmentalism was a movement that was further fostered and triggered in across the world by this limits to growth. Right. So this was furthermore assumed and analyzed and stabilized scenario was created that is there any chance that we can sustain from now till 21st century? 
and in what situations. So further more assumptions and further more results were derived and it kept on doing, right? And now we are in a phase where we are trying to achieve sustainable development goals and we are looking into the need-based approach, reducing carbon footprint approach. All these things that we are doing today is credited to this idea of limits to growth originally, right? So importance of limits to growth is that it led to the sustainable development concept evolution and this theory forced people to think about environmental degradation in 1960s and 70s, right? So that was a very important step. Now, what is the criticism involved of limits to growth? That this report also led to the over-exaggeration of the end of humanity by just year 2000. Right? In just 30 years, the collapse was being predicted. So what happened? It became an alarming report and it also led to negative thinking around the people's head that we are going to die and things also impacted negatively. Remember, it sold 10 million copies over 30 languages and it was considered a huge economic and political thinking racket. It means they wanted business out of it. This was also feared at some point of time, right? Because they sold so many million copies and they earned a lot of profit. So the world community was divided into two groups because of this. That is considered as a criticism. The resource pessimists people and the resource optimists people. So the world was kind of divided because of this thought. Food security can be ensured with new innovations. This was not taken into consideration. Alternative of mineral resources and several other resources like energy resources were not taken into consideration. So the idea was that humanity is eventually going to collapse in just 30 years. By year 2000, we'll be at the lowest point and completely degraded earth will be there. So this is where some criticism is also associated. But the idea in larger picture is that it was a really important movement which triggered, which forced people to think environmentally. That environment has to be conserved, environment has to be preserved and various conservations and preservation measures were taken since then until now, till Paris Agreement, till COP20. Six meet, we are observing that we are looking towards the environmental awareness programs. So now, when we have learned in details the various aspects of limits to growth, its formation, important runs, important sections in the limits to growth, and also about the future of humanity, in the sessions to come, we'll be continuing with economic geography lectures. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep learning, keep sharing the videos with others, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So all the best wishes, take care.